here with uh, Dr. A. A. Nguyen. She's with the U.S. Agency for International Development. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, can you tell me what a resilient and responsive health system means for you? So resiliency is an important aspect that have emerged when describing health systems recently. And a resilient health system is when a health system is able to withstand the shocks, any unexpected challenges to the system, and yet continue to deliver services. The other aspect of a resilient health system is the ability to adapt when those shocks are occurring, that they are able to adapt to the conditions, as it were, and also continue to serve the population that is dependent on it. What do you consider to be the major challenge um, when it comes to making that health system more resilient? So the challenges would be if a, if a health system is vulnerable, it means um, the, the providers, the staff, the uh, people who are running the system are not empowered, they are not equipped to deal with these unexpected shocks. There is not enough resources, there is not enough information, and there is not enough trust between the system and the catchment population. Mm -hmm. So these are the challenges that the system would have to face if it ever becomes uh, not resilient. And what kind of shocks are we talking about? Um, it could be a number of things. The most recent uh, um, occurrence that we've witnessed is in West Africa with the Ebola outbreaks. So, you know, uh, very uh, sudden outbreaks of deadly pathogens and epidemics can sort of flood the system and also uh, cause it to crash. And so, uh, or climate change or natural disasters or conflict and civil unrest. So these are the different kinds of shocks that can happen um, you know, in a very sudden way. And so those are the, the, those are the um, reasons when a health system would, uh, would be challenged. And what action do you think uh, must be taken at this point to make health systems more resilient and responsive? So I think it's important to plan in advance. We have some information of what kinds of causes have become common, to think ahead of to be prepared when those occurrences could happen, to analyze the system, to see vulnerabilities. Um, if people are not equipped, how can you do to um, ensure that health providers, health managers are equipped to build trust in advance and to make sure that the community is also prepared. If in case the formal health system is not functional, that we must find ways, alternative ways, where households, where families, where the community members are also able to pick up on certain aspects of health service delivery or uh, ensuring the, uh, the, the health of their families. Um, and when it comes to uh, policy and systems research, what role do you think that they have to play in building these health systems that you talk about? So on the policy front, of course, uh, to make it a priority to prepare the communities and to prepare the frontline health workers. And so putting enough resources and giving enough know-how for preparedness planning. Um, on the systems research front, I think we need to invest in predicting as much as we can where some of these shocks could happen. So there's some science uh, that we need to be uh, investing in to make sure that we're tracking pathogens, we're modeling, we're using surveillance to understand where the outbreaks could be coming from and in what magnitude. Um, the other aspect is to test the systems, to find markers, and then to try and um, strengthen the systems where if uh, uh, health workers need to be protected, you think in advance. And other kinds of research is to look at the, uh, the qualitative aspects, the attitudes of the community, and to work on uh, addressing these things through communications research, through outreach, and also to have community systems where you're building a network of health systems, the community, and not just uh, through health, but through other socioeconomic uh, aspects as well. So building community resiliency comes in a more complex way and not in a particular sector, but in an intersectoral way. Do you think something like Ebola could have been uh, prevented or predicted? Um, if we had all those ingredients in place, probably we could predict it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can prevent it because uh, I'm not sure if we have enough know-how to deal with pathogens that we're constantly learning how to address. 
And so uh, at least to reduce, to minimize the outcome, the adverse outcomes would be an important um, you know, um, occurrence to try and aim for. Okay, well thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.